This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to do part two of our look at our export settings. Now you'll remember in the last lesson we talked about how to do a very simple quick time same as source export so we're exporting as the same codec that we were working with in our timeline in that case it was DNX 175 1080p 23976 and we also talked a little bit about setting up an actual export of a different codec in that case I used ProRes as an example but it could really have been anything it could have been H.264 it could have been you know DVC Pro HD in this lesson we're going to take a look at how you can take an HD timeline and export it as standard definition. I see many people exporting their timelines as HD and then turning around and trying to flip it over to BSD in a, you know, in a program like Sorensen Squeeze or Adobe's Media Encoder. You don't need to do any of that. Most of the work can be done right inside of Media Composer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the new 8.3.1 update for Media Composer and now how we can export larger than HD material as a same as source export and how we can then take those files and use them in a program like Adobe's After Effects or any other type of program we might need to use them in and now again that's only new with the new 8.3.1 update okay short introduction here let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid's Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. Now something I do want to point out before we actually get rolling here, you remember in the last lesson I talked about, you know, exporting a QuickTime file, same as source, to export pretty much as the clips we have in our timeline. Uh, same codec, same resolution, same everything. And we also used the exporting as a ProRes as, as an example, or we could be talking about again H.264 DVC Pro. But what if you've run into a situation where instead of transcoding or importing or capturing all of your media, you've AMA linked to everything. And you want to export the file as a DNxHD QuickTime file, 23976. Well, the concept works exactly the same whether it's ProRes or whether it's DNxHD. So let me give you an example quickly here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this rampant 3K fire effect here. And let's just say hypothetically this is our whole show. Again, AMA link to you. You'll notice the little link on my master clip here. And I want to export this as a DNxHD clip because, of course, if I right click and I say export and I say export this as same as source and I say save, it's not going to let me. It's going to want to recompress the file. But I want to be specific as to the type of file it's going to recompress it as. Not 115. I want to do 175. So let's do that quickly. Again, export. What we're going to do is we're going to come into our ProRes HD. I'm just going to switch the options here because everything's already laid out for us except in the format options. I can come up to the settings. I can actually come up to DNX HD right here. You'll notice again with now with the 8.3.1 update, I now have access to DNX HR codec, but we'll get to that in just a second here. DNX HD current, we're going to leave it as 709 because you'll see that's what the clip is down here. We're going to leave the alpha as none because there isn't one, but what we want to do is change the codec here to be DNX HD 1080p 23976-175. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK. We're going to do a save as. I'm going to do DNX HD 175. We'll of course say, let's put the space in here. Let's just say OK. I'm simply going to say save. We're going to send this back to the desktop. I'll just call it fire for the purposes of what we're doing here. We'll send this back. Of course, again, recompressing the files that exports it to DNX HD 175. Now, obviously, your export times will vary based on how long your timeline is, but I'm simply going to say open with QuickTime Player. As soon as QuickTime Player opens, here is my clip. And let's come up to my window. Let's come down to my movie inspector here. And you're going to see that this clip is now the DNX HD codec 1920 by 1080 at DNX 175. Okay, it's also 23,976 frames per second. Okay, so let's take this. What I'm going to do is just simply quit out. And let's get back into Media Composer because I want to talk about another example of how we can get in and create some very cool export settings. And this is a situation I see editors get into all of the time. And that is taking an HD timeline and exporting it as an SD clip. Because what I see so many editors do is they'll take their HD timeline, export as HD. That always works fine. 
The problem is once they get into an application like Sorensen Squeeze or Adobe's Media Encoder, that's when you end up having to get involved in all these other settings and things like that. And it just gets to be a little bit of a mess. So how can we get around that mess? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm gonna do is let's just delete this timeline here. Let's just go back to my same as source here. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, this is actually gonna be recompressed as a standard definition clip. And all I need to do now to basically export this as an SD clip, because I'm not gonna come in, what most people think I'm gonna do is say export. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna create a preset, and I'm gonna come in here and change my width and height, but I'm not gonna do that at all. Because this again just leads to the possibility of problems. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change our timeline to be an SD timeline simply by coming up to the format tab. I'm gonna come to my presets. Let's just come to NTSC and we'll set it to be 23976 NTSC, you know, if we were making a DVD hypothetically. Now, of course, as you can see, the clip is now anamorphic. Let's just put it at best resolution. It's anamorphic, so it fills the entire frame. So if you go back to one of my lessons about making DVDs from Media Composer, you'd know that we could take this anamorphic clip, we could run it through Adobe's Media Encoder, and we could recompress it as a proper 16 by nine file. But let's just say for hypothetical purposes, we're gonna go letterbox. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come to my effects here. Let's come down to, I believe it's in reformat. And all I wanna do is give it a 16 by nine letterbox, just like that. So this is essentially the way that this clip is gonna look when it's exported, okay? So let's create an export setting for this. All I'm gonna do again, simply select the entire clip, right click, come to export. I'm gonna come into my options. Now you're gonna see that inside of my options, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come to the width and height, and we're gonna to wanna to set this to be 720 by 46, 601, non-square pixels. Again, 601709, the native dimensions, because we've reformatted the project, is gonna be 720 by 46. The audio format will still be stereo. I'm gonna to come to the format options because we don't want DNX HD, but I still wanna use the Avid codec. So what I can do is simply come into settings. Let's actually come down to the Avid Meridian compressed codec right there. You'll see the frame rate is still current. Our depth is not millions of colors plus, it's just millions of colors because we don't have that plus alpha channel. I'm just gonna put the quality at best and inside of options, we're gonna make sure that we're at 601, we're at NTSC, and in this case, I'm gonna leave us as two to one interlaced. Of course, I could get in and change this to be whatever I wanted it to be. Now, actually, in the purposes of what we're doing, we probably wanna go with progressive, not interlaced, because I am working in progressive. So let's just simply say okay. We'll say okay. And now again, if I was gonna be working in interlaced, which in most cases you probably would, coming from 1080i, you'd wanna go interlaced. So what I'm gonna do is simply say, okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this NTSC Progressive, okay? Let's just say, okay, let's say save. Let's send this to the desktop. We'll call it again, NTSC Progressive, okay? Simply say save. Again, it's gonna recompress this file as standard definition now. The great thing is, is that we've just avoided all of the confusion of going to another application to then take this file and flip it over. Again, I could export this as you know H.264. I could export it even as animation codec if I wanted to. But now you'll see on the desktop, if I come to open with and I come down to QuickTime Player, there's that QuickTime file ready to go. Okay, and of course I can come up to my window. I can come down to Show Movie Inspector. And you'll see that we've now exported this as the Avid Meridian Compressed Codec 720 by 46 at 23.98 frames per second. Now if we wanted more details about this clip, of course I could open it in Media Info, but I think we're pretty good. Okay, last but certainly not least, let's talk about exporting 4K clips or sequences from our Media Composer timeline. Okay, so let's command and tab back into Avid Media Composer, and we're not gonna need our standard definition timeline anymore because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to our 4K clip here. Now, let's just switch our project over here to be 4K. And we're just gonna come down to our 4K. It is a DCI scope project that we're gonna be working in at 23,976 frames per second. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that essentially everything that I've taught you up until this point works exactly the same in any resolution, whether it's SD, HD, 2K, 4K, Ultra HD, doesn't matter. Okay. Now in this case, you'll see that this clip is 24 frames per second and we're in a 23, 976 frame per second timeline. So I cannot do a quick export of this, but that's actually okay because I can actually get in and show you how we would set up again, much like we'd done before 
a preset just in case you happen to have all kinds of different clips of different frame rates in your timeline and you just want to export it as one master clip, this is how you would do it. What we're going to do again, right click export exactly like we did before you should almost be able to sing along with me as we do this again we're going to come into options quicktime movie this is going to be width and height right down here 4096 by 1716 which is the resolution for dci scope in 4k 601709 audio format is just going to be stereo now what we're going to do is come to our format options of course in here inside of our settings you'll remember i mentioned it before Right up here at the top under DNX HD is the new DNX HR codec. Now I should also point out that these QuickTime components are also available as a separate download because the last thing you want to do is get in and export this as a QuickTime movie that you can see on your computer and then you send it to somebody and then they can't watch it. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can always head on over to the Avid website and download the Avid DNX HR QuickTime components codec for your computer. Okay, so we're just going to select DNX HR. What we're going to do is leave the frame rate as current. You'll see the color levels are set to 709. You'll see the resolution that we have to choose from is DNX HR, high quality 10 bit, high quality 8 bit, standard, or low bandwidth, and of course 444. So, what we'll do, let's just do standard quality just because we can, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to say OK. Again, we're going to leave everything else the same. I'm going to say OK. Now what we want to do is make sure again, we are very specific when we name this export setting. This is going to be 4K DCI scope, and I believe it was standard quality. You see how important it is to name these codecs or these export settings so that when you're going to export something, you can easily go in and find the exact export setting that you're going to want to use. All we're going to do is say save. I'm going to send this back to the desktop, 4K DCI scope. Okay. We're simply going to say save. Now you'll see that the export is not super quick. So what I'm going to do just for the purposes of our recording is I'm going to speed up the export. The export's going to take about a minute and 30 seconds for this 20 second clip. Okay. Now again, before I hide out of Media Composer, I want to remind you that of course what I'm showing you now is not possible in 8.3 of Media Composer. In 8.3 of Media Composer, you only have the option to export as DPX sequences. You need 8.3.1 to do the technique that I just showed you. What I'm going to do, hide out of Media Composer, let's come to our clip, let's say open with, of course, QuickTime Player. Now of course my screen is not exactly the right size here. Let's just go down to half size here. Now it's important to keep in mind, you're going to notice the black bars on the left and right. That's because this clip wasn't exactly a scope size clip and I didn't get in and do frame flex, but that's okay. I wonder if it'll actually play back in real time here. There you go. Take a look at that. Playing back in real time in QuickTime. And what's also exceptionally important about this update that you need to keep in mind is now what I have the ability to do is to come into a program like Adobe's After Effects. I can now take this file. I can import the 4K scope clip from Media Composer stick it into a new composition here. Let's just zoom back. And of course, you'll see that this is a 4K scope project. And if I was to come into the render queue to render this out, if I was to come into the format options of this clip, I have access to the DNX HR codec right from within programs like After Effects now. So I can get in, do some graphics work to these files, export them, and import them into Media Composer just like I was working in SD or an HD timeline. Okay, so I hope these last two lessons have shown you how imperative it is to get every step of the export process right because you want to make sure that what you have in Media Composer is going to be what you have when you export that clip onto your desktop so that when you send it to your client, it's exactly what they expect. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.